Hi, this is Elias Saba from AFTVNews.com with a quick video comparing the first gen Fire TV stick, first gen Fire TV, and second gen Fire TV relative to how they each handle H.264 encoded video versus H.265 encoded video. I'm often asked if the Fire TV stick is a good device for video playback since it has a much weaker CPU than the Fire TV boxes, so I put together this video to show you that as long as you're playing video using the right codec, the CPU is almost irrelevant for video playback because all of these devices have dedicated hardware decoders. On the left of the screen is the first gen Fire TV stick, in the middle is the first gen Fire TV, and on the right is the second gen Fire TV. All videos are being played using the latest stable version of Kodi on stock devices running the latest FireOS software version. At the top I've indicated the video codec being used, the bitrate of the video, and I've enabled Kodi's codec overlay so you can see each device's CPU usage and player bitrate. What you're watching right now is a 40 megabit per second H.264 video. This is around the quality you can expect from a Blu-ray video, and as you can see, all three devices are playing the file smoothly without overwhelming the CPU. That's because all three devices have dedicated hardware designed to decode H.264 video. If we bump up the bitrate to 60 megabits per second, you can see the playback is still smooth and the CPU usage stays pretty much unchanged. At this bitrate, we're already way above the quality of video streamed by services like Netflix and Amazon, which both stream 1080p at less than 10 megabits per second. Notice that the bitrate reported by the player is right around 60 megabits per second, which is where we expect it to be. Moving up to the extreme case of a 100 megabit per second video, which nobody would realistically use, we start seeing the first gen Fire TV stick and Fire TV struggle. Notice that even though the devices can't keep up with the video, their CPU usage hasn't changed much. You might expect to see 100% CPU usage, but the dedicated video decoder is still the one handling the daunting task of decoding this video, so the CPU doesn't have much to do. You can see the bitrate reported by the player on the first gen Fire TV stick and Fire TV is not reaching 100 megabits per second. This indicates the hardware decoder is just not capable capable of decoding this much data fast enough, but the bitrate reported by the player on the second gen Fire TV is reaching high bit rates, which is why playback is still smooth even at this high of a bitrate. Now we'll move to a video encoded with the H.265 codec and start things off at a measly 3 megabits per second. Immediately you can see the first gen Fire TV stick and Fire TV are struggling. That's because neither device has a hardware decoder capable of decoding H.265 video. The CPU on both devices is pretty much maxed out because it has to take on the task of decoding this video since the hardware decoder does not support H.265 video. The first gen Fire TV with its more powerful 1.6 gigahertz quad core CPU is able to almost keep up with the second gen Fire TV's dedicated H.265 hardware decoder, resulting in smoother playback than the much weaker 1 GHz dual core Fire TV stick. Neither device was made for H.265 encoded video, so even though it's just a 3 megabit per second bitrate video, it results in a relatively bad viewing experience. The second gen Fire TV on the other hand does have an H.265 capable hardware decoder. That's because it's a 4K device and H.265 is the preferred codec for 4K video streams from Netflix and Amazon Video. Just like with the H.265 264 videos from before, the second gen Fire TV CPU isn't doing much work because all the heavy lifting is being done by the dedicated hardware decoder. Moving up to a 15 megabit per second H.265 video, which is around the quality used by Netflix and Amazon for 4K streaming, we can see the second gen Fire TV handles this without any issues because it was designed with dedicated hardware to handle this exact codec and bitrate. With the previous 3 megabit per second H.265 video, the first gen Fire TV was almost watchable due to its CPU capabilities alone, but now at 15 megabits per second, the first gen Fire TV CPU just can't keep up anymore, and the Fire Fire TV stick just has no hope of processing this much data using its CPU alone. Lastly, we'll bump up the bitrate to 100 megabits per second, which again nobody would realistically use. The first gen Fire TV stick and Fire TV have no hope of processing this amount of data using their CPU alone, so they're practically displaying a slideshow of static images at this point. The second gen Fire TV is handling this 100 megabit per second H.265 video without a sweat, thanks to its H.265 capable hardware decoder. For comparison, let's switch back to the H.264 video at the same bitrate of 100 megabits per second to remind you how well even even the relatively weak first gen Fire TV stick was able to handle this extreme bitrate when a codec that the hardware was designed for is used. I hope this video was able to demonstrate that when it comes to playing high quality video, the CPU of a device is not nearly as important as the capabilities of the dedicated hardware decoder. 
If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button on YouTube to let me know you'd like to see more videos like this one. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I host a weekly series called the AFTV Newscast where I discuss the Fire TV and topics like this on a weekly basis. And of course, keep it locked to AFTVNews.com for all things Fire TV.